Yeah, hi. Uh, this is uh, going from red to green. It's BOV1361. Red versus green similarities and differences explored with Red Hat and SUSE. So uh, my name is Fred Langen, and uh, I've been at SUSE for, uh, I'm going on my second year. And uh, I previously was a system administrator for large companies whose primary installation was uh, Red Hat and uh, sometimes other distributions. And uh, so SUSE was a, a pleasant surprise to me at the notable differences and uh, the commonalities between the two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, speak about my experience as a, a former system administrator coming to um, SUSE. And uh, I'll talk about some of the things that I discovered. And uh, I'll talk about differences from a sysadmin background perspective. I'll showcase these differences and I'll speak extensively about some of the tools that uh, are unique and feature to uh, SUSE. Um, one of the things that uh, is a little different about this is this is a, a flow of story that'll talk about the things that I discovered and how I found SUSE to be unique and distinct. This is not really a technical takeout of Red Hat. So we'll start with uh, a little foundation background. The, um, the Linux standard base is uh, a joint project that uh, involves several Linux companies and distributions. Uh, under the Linux Foundation, including uh, Red Hat and SUSE. And the Linux standard base is officially uh, it's registered under the uh, International Organization for Standards. It covers file system, hierarchy, uh, libraries, and a number of commands and utilities that, and as well as uh, run levels. And the object of the Linux standard base is to promote open standards that uh, increase the compatibility among Linux dist distributions. So uh, the uh, SUSE and Red Hat's similarities. Now there's quite a few of these. Um, both SUSE and Red Hat have their start way back in the mid 90s. Um, SUSE had their first release in uh, 1994 and Red Hat was about the same time coming in the middle of the next year. And um, both of them have similar infrastructure, uh, similar structure for infrastructure for support and distribution and training. Looking at the product offerings, there's uh, similar categories is in the set of products, core OS, uh, cloud storage, and uh, even a system management tool. Uh, in fact, the system management tool itself uh, comes from a common root background. And until, um, until Red, Hat, Red Hat did Satellite 6, both Red Hat and SUSE Manager were based on the Spacewalk project. And both companies have a strong commitment to the open source approach to software development. And even with uh, recent changes in Red Hat, Red Hat still maintains this strong commitment. Uh, SUSE has a open source their operating system. Uh, it's OpenSUSE. It's found at 
OpenSUSE.org. It's a uh, popular desktop, especially among developers. Some people describe it as the developer's desktop. Uh, uh, Red Hat has an upstream operating system. It's CentOS. So that's similarities. Let's talk about differences. And let's talk about some of the tools. So the first thing I want to talk about is package managers. In the past, package managers have been nothing really to get excited about. I mean, I've used Red Hat's Yum. I've used uh, Debian's Apt. And they have about even numbers of features that I like and dislike. It's never been something that I've like got, got excited ready to go to war for or anything. And I learned to use whatever was at hand. I, I didn't complain. And Yum's been recently replaced with a DNF. And I haven't used DNF, so I'm not really going to talk too much about it. Uh, it, it has made some improvements, but it's still uh, nothing about, it's nothing to get excited over. However, Zippers, a pleasant surprise. And the name comes from uh, Zen Yast Packages, Patches, Patterns, Products. And the ER is just for fun. You know, like Yum, it downloads and installs, updates, and removes packages. You know, Zipper has these types of things, but it has a much more powerful array of abilities than Yum. It has an intuitive syntax that allows for abbreviated commands, and I like that. I like being able to use shortcuts in my command line tools. And almost, um, and when when it comes to the learning curve for a package manager, Zipper is by far the friendliest for. Uh, newbies to uh, Unix. Uh, it has a, it's a much more friendly tool for beginners than, for instance, Red Hat's Yum. Uh, Zipper has the, the graphical interface uh, through Yast, and uh, it's faster and it's more powerful. Uh, when I uh, use package manager in the past, one of the things that's always been more difficult is dependency difficulties. So Zipper uses a SAT solver, which is uh, universally agreed as the best dependency solution. It uh, is able to resolve dependencies uh, faster, and it, um, Zipper uses a patterns option for installing group pack packages, and this makes it uh, kind of easier to use. It's a more, uh, all in all, I would say Zipper is a more modern and uh, easier to use tool. And then there's, there's the output. Zipper has a tabular output, it makes it easier to read. And that's a kind of just a personal preference there. And then, of course, there's patches and packages. You talk about the repositories and um, learning about the size of SUSE's standard repositories really made me realize what kind of uh, difficulty I was dealing with. I didn't really know how hard it was until I realized that you could create such small repositories that were tidy easy to search through, easy to update and download. Uh, SUSE releases their service pack every 12 to 18 months, and uh, they repackage the whole release into them. And this, uh, this predictable release schedule makes for a tidy, searchable repository. And then, of course, there's Yast. Yast is a real interesting tool. Uh, you know, YAST says, stands for yet another setup tool, and 
I use this a lot. I mean, the fact that SUSE is the sole user of YAST is really interesting to me. I mean, this tool is amazing. It's just, like I like to say, it's dynamite. When I want to install a app, an application, YAST goes and downloads the binaries and installs it. And then YAST allows me to configure the application. And then, without having to go anywhere else, change to a command line or do anything differently, YAST allows me to start the application. Yeah. I like the uh, text user interface. Uh, it works inside my window manager, and it, it gives me GUI-like function, but uh, it's uh, kind of a, it's a holdover from the KDE days. And uh, with YAST, you have TUI, GUI, and you have uh, uh, that kind of function with the easy to use kind of cursors, curses, and curses uh, ability. And so if you're like me and you don't like to touch the mouse, uh, you like to touch the mouse as frequent, infrequently as possible, I'm a keyboard driven person. If I can tab over to use stuff, TUI interface is uh, what appeals to me. Uh, YAST has control over a lot of the functions. And so, particularly when I'm on my desktop, I tend to use YAST for everything, all services, installing and adding new things. So having this single tool to do everything is, is kind of like a... Uh, a dream of many uh, management authoring uh, engineers, but YAS does it really well. So, a uh, little bit about, so moving into a similar type of thing is uh, SUSE Manager. And with it comes, whenever you talk about SUSE Manager, you talk about live patching. I'll talk about live patching in a bit. But first, let's talk about SUSE Manager. So SUSE is constantly talking about simplifying, modernizing, accelerating business. And SUSE Manager does all these things. It's uh, it wasn't designed with those words in mind, but it definitely is the uh, star in my mind of that uh, slogan. As a former systems administrator, for sometimes I would often I would have to manage thousands, thousands and thousands of servers across the globe in different types of environments, different types of uh, you know, physicality or virtuality, you know, managing and keeping them up to date is kind of uh, very difficult. I don't want to say a nightmare because it's just, it's just very difficult. You have to write a lot of tools to keep everything up to date. Sue's manager is something I wish I had in past Fred's life. Everybody talks about what they'd do if they had a time travel machine. I would bring SUSE Manager back to me. SUSE Manager allows you to patch your entire environment in a single, simple screen. With SUSE Manager, sometimes people call it SUMA, just using the first two letters of both words. So if I say SUMA, I mean SUSE Manager. With SUSE Manager, you, uh, you can quickly see which systems have what patches and which systems are exposed to critical vulnerabilities and exploits, CVEs, as people say. So what you can do is you could easily, for instance, group your systems into the kinds of groups that are logically uh, important to you, whether they are test systems, or geographically located, or uh, by hardware, or by purpose, or whatever uh, type of 
grouping that seems important to you and you can curate the kind of environment that that group gets. It also allows you to quickly group to look at a single group of servers. So if you have a particular brand of hardware that is uh, needs a specific type of software patch, uh, you can group it together, apply that patch, and make sure it keeps up to date. Or you can make sure that it never gets patches. Uh, using SUSE's, uh, SUSE Manager, in SUSE Manager 4, uh, content, uh, the lifecycle content projects was created. And it allows you to create this kind of flow. And uh, with a single click, you can create a uh, test environment and have your patches go just to this test group of systems. And then after the, the test period is over, keeping that same set of uniform patches, you can push them to the next set, whether it's a, a dev set of servers or your production system or to a mirror site or one then the other then the other. Your flow can be as long as you want and whatever systems you want. Keeping this simil, this uniform flow and uh, this testing type of environment is something that people have found super valuable. I found it amazing. If I had this back in my life, I wouldn't have missed so many uh, servers where you notice that, oh, I forgot to group these servers in, and now they're not patched up. It's a really easel, easily read format. Uh, it's easy to see things because of the graphical interface and it shows everything uh, with uh, how their patch status is. Um, System Manager is constantly being developed and in uh, the next release, this is Manager 4.1, we're gonna have uh, support for containers. So that's something a lot of, a lot of people have been asking for. So like IT environments, IT environments, they just, they're getting a lot more complicated every day. It's just the way it is. Uh, you don't have a homogenous uh, data center anymore. You have a data center that has lots and lots of different types of needs. And sometimes you have different types of operating systems. Very frequently, you will have competing products uh, side by side in the data center. SUSE Manager goes with SUSE's uh, goal to reduce complexity. And uh, it actually is able to, uh, you're actually able to use SUSE Manager for more than just SUSE products and open SUSE products. Using SUSE Manager, you can manage your Red Hat and your CentOS systems and even Ubuntu systems all in the single pane of glass. And so by creating this simple interface, suddenly uh, an IT organization can take the time that they spent dealing with all of these separate uh, types of environments and use it to tackle the next type of complicated tool that comes into their environment. Uh, so uh, the background of SUSE Manager is uh, it was uh, co-developed with uh, other open source companies. Uh, it has a similar background to Red Hat's Spacewalk. They named their product after the open source product. Uh, but uh, after Spacewalk 5, Red Hat uh, diverged. They went in a different path and changed their, 
they change their system so that it's no longer part of the open source community and it's no longer spacewalk base. So SUSE Manager is now uh, reflects their open source to an upstream upstream project called uh, Uyuni. It's a U Y U N I, and you can see it at uyuni-project.org. It's important to mention these types of things because uh, something I'll mention later on, but SUSE's uh, dedication to open source, open sourcing their software kind of makes SUSE uh, future-proof in case, look, a lot, a lot of companies don't live forever. And one of the things people are afraid of change is, is if I go with this company and they disappear, how will I be able to support? Having an open source company means that you'll always get support for your product, even if uh, you know the, the company that you purchased it from originally is gone. There's always development at uuni-project.org. Check it out. Uh, so patching, in, patch installation and reporting. SUSE Manager does more than that. I've talked about the content uh, lifecycle, uh, which allows you to keep the flow in. But uh, one of the things I didn't mention is that in that flow, you can build in rules inside it to do things like uh, forbid certain patches or set it up so that uh, allow certain patches. So, uh, for instance, uh, I helped a customer just build a rule so that they wouldn't get any patches updated past uh, last month. And so they wanted to create a static environment for their test servers where they still received salt patches, but no other patches. So we set up two filters, deny patches before, uh, ap deny any patches that come after May, and still allow any salt patches that come in. And it's great. So now you have a, a, a little bit of uh, safety and comfort knowing that you're not going to have unexpected changes in your uh, test environment. So often a uh, company, this is a manager, is uh, life patching. So life patching is, Sousa's life patching is just an amazing product. It allows IT admins to patch the kernel to SUSE systems without rebooting. A kernel patch, while the system is running, without any, uh, without any quieting of the system or pausing of any database or any pausing of the operating system. With live patching, an IT admin can patch up as many systems as he needs within minutes. You can see uh, the slide shows uh, a specific CV audit. So you can go and quickly look up uh, a vulnerability exploit that, uh, and check to see if all your servers are uh, covered or not. The CV audit is part of SUSE Manager. The live patching part comes in when you want to patch that up and it's super fast. You run the live, you download the live patch, you run it, it quickly uh, creates a, a patch around, which I'll explain in a moment, and then it, uh, your systems are continue running without any interface, any, uh, hesitation, interference, or, or interruption. Now, you can see in the, the image that I've displayed, there's a, 
uh, system that's vulnerable right there. If that system was patched, that would turn to a green check mark. The nature of live patching is uh, here. I'll, I'll talk about how it works. So what live patching does is it uses a, a piece of technology called uh, KGraft, and KGraph creates a workaround. What happens is it goes and it uh, is has identified the function that in the kernel that is causing uh, the vulnerability or exploit, and KGraph does just a little workaround, a little routing around that vulnerable function to the new function, and it does it so that all traffic goes around that patch, and, it, and there's no uh, there's no performance hit, not even microseconds. There's nothing at all. It's it's my favorite product. Past life system administrator Fred had uh, multiple weekends where I had to reboot thousands of servers for uh, some kind of uh, some kind of meltdown type of uh, exploit. And you know, when you, when you're rebooting a lot of servers, there's always hardware issues, and your weekend of just rebooting servers turns into a weekend of hardware repair. And that's it's something that like people who manage large infrastructure data centers are very familiar with. So I talk about what I would go back and bring to Fred in the past with my time machine. It's Susan Manager and live patching. So another part that kind of works with, uh, you know, people talk about Susan Manager, then they talk about how do I transition uh, my Red Hat and CentOS clients over? SUSE is pretty unique in the way they work with other companies in the data center. As an open source company, there's this culture of yes and that happens. And a lot of that is working with people who definitely are either um, adjacent or competitive, and uh, we work with them. It's a kind of a unique way of working in the data center or working with customers. And uh, one of the ways that this is this functions is how we help people transition from uh, you know, other operating systems to SUSE. So the part is called expanded support. And expanded support basically means SUSE uh, takes over support for the Red Hat um, services and uh, services contract. And so what that uh, typically means is that like we, uh, it allows customers, especially Red Hat customers, specifically Red Hat customers, uh, sometimes CentOS customers, but most often it's used with Red Hat customers, <clears throat> they can uh, be uh, have a little bit of comfort and ease in knowing that their transition is done at uh, a more leisurely, a more controlled and sane pace than would be as if the cutoff date was one day and suddenly you have thousands of unsupported uh, servers or virtual machines. The way expanded support is done is that uh, customers suddenly don't have to worry about calling Red Hat and calling SUSE. The whole idea of who do I call, how do I manage everything, uh, it's all done through calling SUSE. Um, any new binaries that they need, they get through SUSE, and SUSE, like Oracle, will recompile the binaries. And so uh, it shows that the binaries 
although essentially are un unchanged, I mean, they are unchanged, except for the part where it says last compiled by SUSE. If you do a RPM dash Q, RPM dash Q uh, tells you uh, information who compiled it last. So like, I think uh, Red Hat requires uh, one to three months of, uh, of warning if you are going to terminate your contract. That's that uh, time period combined with, uh, if you combine that with expanded support, it allows you to comfortably transition your, uh, your support services from Red Hat to SUSO without having to worry about sudden and abrupt changes. It's not something that anybody wants to do. Now, one of the um, one of the more interesting things that uh, SUSE uses is uh, the open source uh, salt stack. So SUSE manager has salt built into it. Uh, Celeste 15 SP2 is coming with salt and uh, salt is built into these tools and it allows for uh, a lot more configuration management and allows for more powerful commands for uh, SUMA to work. And so salt, uh, salt uses the master minion concept and messaging uh, between the to can be done quickly. Uh, I, I believe Ansible uses a sequential uh, messaging system. Oh, it uses SSH. Um, Salt can use SSH or it can use its uh, a zero MQ bus. And so with the zero MQ bus, uh, especially from SUSE Manager, you can send out commands and requests, you can send your messaging out, which is the commands from SUSE Manager to uh, all the clients, all in tandem. And so you can get, you could send uh, just regular uh, Unix commands like uh, uptime or something and get back your entire environment all at once rather than waiting for one to finish and then the next to finish. Uh, and this is great because when you're managing many, many, many systems, you know, my background is showing, uh, being able to get a quick, uh, quick response of everything back at once is a big deal. Uh, and salt's more than just unidirectional. It has a sort of logical decision-making and, uh, it can do things like uh, sequential commands built into uh, salt, so that way you can say, uh, reboot the server, patch it up, then reboot it again, uh, and then send me some information, whatever. Uh, and so uh, that's, that's a little bit about salt. And I want to talk about something that was kind of caught me off guard. File systems are not something that people think of as changing. The file system is a very important underpinning of uh, your Linux system. You know, XFS is just works. Everybody uses it. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe uh, an ex the, the, you might use an occasional file, specialized file system for storage or something. But the idea of changing the uh, root file system, you know, mount slash is not something you mess with until I learned about uh, ButterFS. BTRFS is pronounced ButterFS. That was the first thing that uh, I had a hard time taking it seriously until I found out this is, it's crazy modern. So, Butter, ButterFS is 
as more as different from XFS as a modern cell phone is to an older cell phone. The time difference, I think the last time, I think XFS was uh, architected in 2003, I think. So it's, it's pretty old. It, uh, it's, it's getting up there. A cell phone that would that's 17 years old would be um, it would it would just be a, a dead weight piece of uh, plastic and and glass and expensive raw materials. But uh, we haven't changed our file systems that much, so we don't really notice. Once you start using ButterFS, you um, and then if you have to go back to a uh, file systems that's built on XFS, it really feels like you're traveling back to uh, uh, the past, a part of time where there's changes. First of all, ButterFS is, it allows for larger file systems. And this kind of change is obvious. I mean, what does everybody always talk about is the limitation in the uh, number of files you can have in a directory. Now, ButterFS allows for uh, larger file structure, file system structures, um, it's faster. But then on top of it, it's got uh, this feature built into it for snapshot and rollbacks of the root file system. This is crazy awesome. You know, with the the Yast graphical tool. You can uh, you can quickly see what changes have been made, and you can roll them for roll them back if you make a mistake. You know, like if you are, for instance, upgrading your file system from one version to another, having the ability to roll it back using a a brilliantly clear uh, tool that shows the old changes in red the new changes in blue it's better than it's better than linux's diff with the right arrows and left arrows having everything displayed in this kind of way makes so much sense and having it built into your root file system makes it so that you don't have to have that panicked feeling all the time of oh my gosh that uh, you know i made a change to the root file system while i was totally exhausted. What if I made a mistake? Making mistakes is easy when you have built-in snapshots. And uh, easy is awesome. So one of the last things I want to talk about is just um, a more interesting thing is just that Susan's also kept up with the networking tools. So uh, Built-in is a unique tool to SUSE called uh, Wicked. Wicked is uh, built to be modern in the same way that a lot of these other new features that were surprising and exciting to me were also modernized. You know, Wicked has got uh, a lot of new changes in how it runs things, but because a lot of us come from uh, the past. We still use, we still run to commands that we learned. Well, that's cool. Uh, Wicked has uh, backward compatibility. It scripts around, wrapped around uh, if up and if, if command types uh, of commands. And so that way, if you can't think of the way to do it through Wicked, you can still use Fred can still use the way that he grew up learning. And on top of that, Wicked works with a lot of the modern ways. The data center's updated. A lot of things have happened with the uh, virtual networks and uh, you know remote let networks and uh, you know wireless. Well, who would have thought wireless would have been something that uh, we would have invested in you know, 20 years ago? But Wireless is something that is, is now uh, a network that 
we need to be conscious of. And so uh, Wicked is uh, um, one of the many modern modernizations that comes with SUSE. How does SUSE do these types of things? I don't know. I look to the competitors. I look to uh, previous distributions I've worked with. And I, you know, my first comment is always, wow, this is, this is great. I'm lucky to have found this. And then my next comment is, what's taken them so long? Why did Red Hat abandon the project? One of the things that uh, I forgot to mention about ButterFS is it wasn't developed solely by SUSE, like so many other um, projects that have become um, the uh, part of day-to-day -day life in SUSE. They were all open source projects developed with other open source companies, big companies, Red Hat companies. In fact, Red Hat even had ButterFS featured in one of their early releases, but then they decided to abandon the project inexplicably. So I hope you enjoyed my story about uh, my exciting journey through SUSE and all the products that I found exciting. I really do get super excited. Ask anybody about Fred and live patching and they'll tell you. Did he say it's his favorite product? I always do. Uh, so I want to thank you for being a part of this and uh, thank you for attending SUSECON Digital.